with and also doing pin brew. Uh, I started out just collecting about 25 years ago and got into just did that mainly hey put them in my basement not really want anybody to mess with them kind of like that or do stuff and, and learn to tinker with them and work on them more and more and then I had a, a bowl and alley asked me to start putting some games out too later you know later on after we started doing the shows and I was like well you know I'll start off with two or three and this is was probably about 15 years ago started putting a couple bowl at a bowling alley. Then it went from three that's, at the one bowling alley. That's when they were like less expensive. Right? Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and back in the day, we used to, you know, and that's one thing you can ask me, you know, I know Trent really well, Trent Augustine really well from Tilt. We I mean, he used to get containers of games from overseas. I'd go down and pick up, you know, 10 of them off of them or whatever. I mean, and at the, that, at the price they were back then was, I mean, not even, I mean, we'd get them eight, nine hundred dollars for fishtails, if that, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. But nowadays it's, you know, but I mean, it was still a lot of work. You had to know what you were doing. They were coming back from overseas and you'd have to change the power back and that kind of stuff, which, but that's, it was pretty simple once you figured it, once you learned it, you know. Uh, but, uh, and then was, as things progressed, I had three pinballs there. Then we started, you know, then it went to four, then all of a sudden it was 10, then it's, now it's 23 at the one location that I have. That's one of my main locations. And then I also have four or five breweries that I do now and uh, a couple other just little bars. But saying that, I mean, there is, it is, it, if, if pinball's not going to just make your, make or break you for a living, you know what I mean? I just don't, it's not going to have you, you're not going to be able to make enough money at it as out there. But it will, you can make enough money to support your hobby, you know, and, and to buy other games and things like that. Uh, I mean, it is a good, it does good revenue if you work at it and do the leagues and you do, you know, some tournaments and stuff like that in the IFPA. I mean, you definitely can, you definitely can uh, do, you know, support your, with the prices of the games right now, you need some kind of, you know, you can't, if you want to buy five, four, three or four games, you know, who, who can really drop $30,000 on, on that game, she goes. It's kind of hard for the average person at home of being a, you know, just a collector, and that's what I got to look at back in the day. I'm like, well, this can supplement my pinball pinball hobby, you know, to turn it into a business. And and you know, now I have, you know, like I said, I I own myself about a hundred pinball machines. Wow. I have about a hundred pinball machines and a. I don't know how many are some ar arcades, arcades, cranes. How many of them are distributed? Out that are out on location. Yeah. I think I checked. Let me see the other day. Well, I have twenty some here, so them aren't. So I, I think I have about sixty-five or seventy of them are out on location. Wow. Somewhere in that neighborhood, and I have out. In so there is the, the storage is on location, basically. Yeah, I mean, yes, you could look at it like that. Yes, sometimes you know it's like, hey, you know, yeah, you know, instead of putting in storage, it's out there, you know. And I and I have also looked at numerous times. About buying my own place, I'm getting and making an arcade. Or, there you go. Man. I thought about it. I almost. I've, I've been close a couple of times. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little too old for that. <laughs> You're retired now. I right? know, but I'm. Nah. On, like I said, I'm retired from my regular job, but now I'm. I'm doing this kind of full time. So, but which before I was doing my regular work and this full time and this operating games and trying to do. You know, you try to do. You got to. Get everything with your home life too to try to you know with you know whatever family life and whatever it gets to be a whole juggling act you know but uh, like I said I've been I've been doing it for about 25 years a little long give or take got back into pinball when I first bought an Aztec pinball when I got out of school and uh, got that sold it got out of pinball a little bit and then got then got back my one friend bought a game got back into it and then like I said then we went to the where I started. Collecting first, just collecting four or five, and it got to six, then it got to eight, you know, then it was ten, you know, then it was all of a sudden, hey, well, I mean, may need to get a bigger house, you know, so it was, it's what it turned into, you know, to get a bigger place for the games. Uh, then I was, went to the Allentown, I remember going to uh, the York show, pinball show, and I, that's when another thing I started thinking, I was like, man, we need, should, we need a show in Ohio. You know, we didn't have any shows in Ohio, and... Uh, how, how was the York show? The, it it was a it was a good it's a good show really good show and and what I was that? Remember? it was like the house that was going on for a long time yeah that was it was back probably like two thousand 
and two or three. I went there a couple times and I was with one of my friends, Rick Furness at the time. I was like, Rick, we, we've been going, I says, we, I mean, and he was actually buying containers too at the same time like Trent was. And I'm like, look, we have these, we were starting to get a, a pile of games. Let's start, let's do this and get more people involved and let's do a show in Ohio. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's like, he's, he's like, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if we can. And then, so cause then I got to talking with Mike Pasek and that's how we started it. And I got to talking with him at one of the auctions. And I think it was too, as a matter of fact, I remember now it was 27 years. It was like, that was, would have been the first Ohio show would have been 17 years ago. Yeah. Cause that's when my daughter, I remember my daughter was a month old at the show. So that's how I can really remember that. So, so we start, so that's how that got started. These shows kind of in Ohio was because, you know, we started, I was like, we need something here. And at that time when we started that, it was, it was really only, you had like the one California show, you had pinball expo, you had York and Allentown. And then it was like the Ohio show. There was, I don't even think the Texas show was it, nothing yet. There was none of these other shows. There was like the fifth or sixth show at the time when we started the Ohio pinball show back then. And then, then from that's when I got into the operating games and we got into, uh, you know, that show, we kept building and building and building, and it was more of a, turned into more of a, it was a flea market kind of show, which was, which was okay. I mean, people come there, buy, sell, trade, and it used to be a whole lot easier to get games to the shows back then because it was, they were $1,500 games. Now, right. if you have a $8,000 game, it's hard to talk you to drag it out of your, wherever you're at, to bring it to a show to let people play for five hours. You know, or, or for 30 hours of you know a weekend so I mean I mean it's still people there's still a lot of good people in the hobby that do do that and then if they, they want to sell something to get a new game then that's you know that's a good opportunity for them to reach people you know come here and they see something they want they trade they could do you know like you know till here now is tra taking you know they'll take trade-ins whatever so I mean that's a good opportunity uh, but like I said, if you're going to ever, if you're operating, if, when you turn, if you turn into an operator from a collector or go to a, you know, I, I ha had them approach me and I still, now I have the so big operators in Akron area and the uh, Canton area and that, if there's a place that wants a pinball machine, they call me. The operator itself calls me and says, hey Marvin, you know, they're in, they're already in there, they'll call us because they don't have any. I, I purchased most of their pinballs because they don't want to, they did not want to have to repair people to have to go out to fix it. That was just their main thing. That for them to send a person out for what they see a pinball machine makes, they would rather not mess with it when they can have an internet jukebox over here that's either going to really work or not work, and and they and they don't have to really train somebody to work on the pinball machines and stuff like that. So that's why they don't really. Most of the operators I know, the big operators that are not anybody that's not a collector, they don't really mess with pinballs anymore. You know, I mean, I think Cadillac in Cleveland does a little bit it's just because the two boys up there are kind of into pinball a little bit, so they do a little bit of it. But most of you get the old operators like Bell Music and some of the ones in this area, they just don't mess with it. No they more. do like pool tables. Yeah, the pool tables, the dartboards, pool tables, ATM machines is, is their thing. And, and which is it's a good thing for collectors if you want to do, if you want to get into, get into a little place like that. And they usually... I know but back in the day they used to say, you know, and Paysec can probably talk to you a little bit about that later about how it used to be, you know, they wouldn't used to, if you went into a place where some, a big operator was, they, they might tear your stuff up and throw it away, you know, throw it outside or something, but it's, I mean, it definitely has changed in that part. I mean, like I said, they, they, they call me all the time, hey Marvin, you want to put a pinball, I got this place here, right, you know, they, they'd love to have a game, you know, come down and talk to them, you know, and it's just, but that's just, the way you know, and I bought stuff from them. They, you know, I've actually is sold it, them stuff. When you place a machine like a bar, when they call you, mm -hmm. is it local uh, laws that you have to do with like Different. contracts and stuff, or do you just have a usually you know, Ohio simple Ohio contract that you could apply with that? I like in Ohio, there's really I don't know some some communities may be a little different for like a vendor's license. There's really you don't really have to do any of that. It's usually just an agreement with the with the bar owner. Yeah, I mean, or you have whatever. To write up and there's you. no license for, as of so well, like a handshake agreement or anything like that. 
It kind of is. I have a yeah. I have a form that I made out myself, and I have them sign it saying that like that I can you know, remove this game within you know a, like give them a week notice and say the game could be removed at any time that I wish or whatever. Vice versa, if he tells me to get it out of there, yeah. Same thing. And and I have him sign it. I sign it. I have a form that I that I have, them. and I usually keep all my serial numbers on my games right there. You know, I have it on that sheet. I have everything and it's signed. It's, I, I, and who, knock on wood, I haven't had any problems. Do they, do they yeah. have to collect the money then? And you, you, I collect all the you money. Collect all no, the money. They, I don't so give them any keys. It's jammed and shut off. Then. Yes. I give them no keys. I mean, if there's, I, I, I just don't so do it's, that. It's almost like a decoration to them. It's not. They're not in there to make to pull in hundreds of dollars a day on the pinball. No, and like these breweries nowadays, it's not. They're they don't really. I'm going to be honest. So I know some people getting hundred percent at breweries. Because the brewery doesn't really, they're not, they don't care about that part of it. They're making their money on the beer. Yeah. It, it, they just want that as an attraction. It's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere. It's an attraction for the people coming in, and they don't, they, that, that, that that's little that bit of money is. It's percent of completeness that they Well, that's an adult finish. establishment, so pinball is more of an adult game, that's mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah, I mean, most of the people, the most, most of the people I know that have breweries, I mean, the most, you're usually at least getting 70%. As an operator, it's a 70 30 deal at least. Most, a lot of people I know, it's 100 percent. And I've had people, I've had a lot of them tell me, "Hey, Marvin, you bring this in, hey, you have all the money, whatever. You get this game here, do whatever." You know, you know, a lot of people now, like your bowling alleys and stuff. A lot of them still are pretty kind of older school people. I mean, it's hard. They still want to get like they think they want to get 50 percent, but but with the prices of the games nowadays, you really can't. And, and I remember the talks where I was telling, I was talking about with talking with Mark. From Marcos before, and we discussed this numerous times and, and about how expensive the games were. And he was saying, you know, another good, another good business model to do is you say, hey, look, you we, you take a hundred percent until that game's paid for, and then if the game's paid for, then if it's paid once it's paid for, if it's doing that well, then you can say, hey, okay, then we're like sixty forty or whatever. But you take, especially like off the first game, yeah, like if you're putting a new game in there. Yeah, on that game itself, you you take, you know, you you get you get your money before they start before they start getting the cut back, you know, on it. So if somebody wanted like, I mean, you can know, you, you can definitely like yeah, that, you can you know. definitely negotiate. It's all negotiations. It's the same. I mean, whatever you know, and usually, like I said, with the breweries, you're not going to have that big of a problem with that with the breweries because they it's 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 more of an attraction. It's, a, it's more of an attraction for them to get the people in the door. I mean. How how big is the push for like the QR, the beaters, and the uh, I mean credit cards? I think it's getting more. I've had people ask me for my one location, and I've have and this is where I've struggled. My biggest location has twenty three pinballs in there, and I and I bought extra aprons for them, but they don't. I think he's talking about mobile pay. Yeah, mobile. Oh, pay. the mobile pay. Instant, I thought you were talking. Pay. I thought you were talking about the Stern, new, the new Stern exactly. thing too. Well, that that's that too. But I mean, you could pay the with mobile that, pay. You could pay with a credit card or. My one friend did that with a. Uh, he bought a one. See, you, you have like an initial cost on that too, which is I think, but they take, I think they were taking. Three percent or two percent, like off every. But he had to buy the units for the for the for the game. You mean the the internet company. Yeah, That's they were. Nice. Yeah, they were taking a cut of a. You know, it's kind of like same That'd thing. Be like like direct deposit almost. Yeah. So, I mean, that would they would get the money fast. I've never. I've, establishment. I've never did it, but I, I mean, I, I can see where, it probably would be profitable. I know, like you know, you're talking like a Dave and Buster's. Sometimes you swipe that stuff, you don't even know what you're paying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten credits. You don't even know what it is. It's like okay, you're swiping it. You know, it's like okay, you know, but. I, I don't. I mean, I, I. don't know if it's. I don't know if it's. If it's worth doing that. I mean, without you know, I think if something was built into the machines, it might be nice. You know what I'm saying? That would it would you know, something was like. I mean, because I think them units were. And I think he bought like four or five of them or something, and it was still seven or eight hundred dollars or something. And then you know, so you got to pay that off, then you're paying the game off. I don't. I mean, I don't know. You know, that's the, the only thing I can say. Good, the best, best thing at all about operating pinball, once you can learn, is that you're going to get your money back from the game. It's like built in. It's like your built in investment. Say you know you you buy a game for six thousand dollars and you operate it for. Or five, four years at this place, and it's made X amount of money. 
you're going to still be able to sell that game that was six thousand dollars for fifty two hundred fifty eight whatever you know so your your money's there you're going to get that back you know you know you're not going to lose anything you might even you know you if it goes up so you might even make you know make money on it who knows you know but it, I mean I, I mean I can tell you one story about my Ghostbusters which will which is I had a Ghostbusters that I Ellie that I bought. <laughs> And they, they were, I don't remember, I think $7,500 when they came out. I bought it, operated it up at the one place where it was at, I operated it, it made, I think like $16,800 is what it made. Wow. I sold it for seventeen five. Wow. So, so when you to it, just think of that, Ghostbusters really was, I mean, but, a, but that's, but that's yeah, but that's not going to be every game, you know what I'm saying, you're not going to have, that was just. That game just all of a sudden took off for whatever reason, and I I even I had a hard time selling it, but it was like, eh, it's time to you know that was yeah I mean it made it it made that money over the years up there I mean it and that game and then like I said every and then all of a sudden people wanted the Ghostbusters. This are you talking about the new Stern? The new Stern Ghostbusters. Wow. Seventeen five. Wow! You look on go on go on look, go on pin side and look at how much they are now. They're twenty some for really? an LE. It's twenty some thousand dollars. Oh my God! My, yeah, and it had made that much money. And you well, you know that Mike knows good. Mike knows the game. He played it. How <laughs> much, when you're times. collecting the, the change and everything, you write down how much it is. You collect it each week, right? Or try to I don't it. really write. I, I know by looking at them. I don't really write. It's in the audits. If it's been in, if especially if it's only been in that one place. I know if you move something, then I can, you write it down. I say, but like my, my, the audits will be on there how much it's made, and it tells you, you know, whatever your free games, how many games. I think that game had, I think that game had 30,000 plays on it or something, 28,000 plays when I sold it. But it, but it still played, hey, tribute to Stern, still played great. Wow. You would have never, if you walked up to that game and played it, you would not knew that game had that many plays on it. Wow. But that's the same way with some of these old Bally Williams. I mean, some of these games have, Buku plays, you know, from, you know, they're 30 years old, you know, 25. Uh, but, yeah, that, I mean, I, that's, uh, that's where your, 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 your kind of your profit is down the road. I mean, compared to a video game, you go buy a whatever, a Terminator video game or whatever, and you, they have to pay $10,000 for it, you operate it for whatever, you're going to maybe sell that game for $2,500 at the best, you know, or maybe hardly nothing. You get ready. It's, just not, it's just not a market for that. For the for the video games like the pinballs, uh, they're not a secondary market for it. Yeah. You know, um, this so I mean just things like that. It's just that's the, what keeps that's the that's the only, I mean that's the things where as a you know when you're a smaller operator just trying to you know buy to keep the business you know just to try to help buy games. I don't really look at it as a it's not my main main business. Like I said, I worked for another company for 35 years. And I just did this on the side. This is just to supply, just to support my hobby, you know, because I love pinball, you know, and that's. I don't think there's anybody else doing it either, like, the, from what I remember, like, in the early days. I don't remember, like, too many games on location. Not like now. Right. Yeah, now, well, they, now, compared to when we started before, you know, like, like the big, like, where, where I was at, you know, the one place Bell Music had, they had. Tons of. I remember going down and buying my one of. Them, well, it wasn't one of my first games. Going down there, and I, they had seven Attack from Mars lined up to pick from. It was five, of them. at like, you know, two thousand dollars. I think they were, you know. And I picked one out. And now they don't have anything because, like I said, it's just if you can't. And that's the other. If you can't work on it, you're not going to ever make any. And you're not going to do. You're not going to be have any kind of a chance of doing anything. On, on location, just because you just you have to be able to do, especially the simplest, simple. I mean, not, the simple to moderate problems you're going to have to be able to fix because you you can't have somebody coming in here, you know, you can't have a, a tech come in and pay them and try to do because you just won't make enough money. To, you won't make enough to even to do anything, you know. I mean, I mean that's. Where I just got that, you know, over the years of just experience, of, you know, from soldering this to looking for this to, and I and I found myself always, don't make the problem, you know, harder than what it is. Usually you start looking, don't try. Oh, it's the board or this and that. Usually it's not that. It's usually something. It's usually something simpler, like a wire off here or there. It's 
It's more more than anything else, or a little, or a, maybe a fuse. It's usually something that's not. I can count. I can count the times that my, it's been like a transistor or something on a board. I mean, over all them years, maybe ten or twenty. I mean, not that many times. I mean, I don't know about you, Mike. I mean, I can't remember that I many think times. Most probably when kids are like singing in different quarters. Yeah, different I mean, it's. I mean, it's not going to be a problem like that. Like, I mean, even if the game's a coil's not firing or something, it's not going to usually be that. It's going to be a wire or something somewhere in that chain of the wiring or something usually. You know, it's not going to be, that's what people sim sometimes make it, and I used to do that too, make it like harder than what it is, you know, that it should be. You know, it's not usually, you look for the simple stuff first because it's usually one of the, it's, that's usually what it's going to be. Uh, do you have any other questions? What's your future plans? Who, me? Uh, I don't Just know. Keep on I don't know. Maybe cut back a little bit. No, I don't know. I don't know. Well, what's the, the like the future of pinball? I mean, Stern seems to be plowing the head and bleeding the industry. But you think Stern's the best on location, right? Like for making yes. I, I I think right now, yes. For 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 a person that's gonna, if you don't want to have the, if you don't want to be running, and that's the other, thing, you don't want to be running back and forth every day, up there to look, you know, especially if a place is thirty minutes away. And you got to drive 30 minutes and back 30 minutes, and then you're there. You, I mean, you don't want to go there for a stuck ball or for any of that kind of stuff. You know, you just want to, you know. And that's where sometimes, you know, when you get to when you get the when you get the ones and two locations, like a, I got a couple places that have like just two games, and one has three. You know, that's a little harder than you know if a ball gets trapped or something there. You kind of have to go over there more than if you got a place with 20. You should, they shut it off. You can be there in a couple, two days, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But the, if you got one or two, you want to get there, you know, and get it fixed. You know, I was here and I have a text. Uh, the bill acceptor is not taking money on my Mandalorian. Okay, so I gotta. I said I'll be, you know, I'll be there when I get there. You know, they have four, I think five games at that brewery. They, I mean, they'll be fine. They can put quarters in it, you know. But do you ever give uh, locations a set of keys to? Like if there's a ball stuck that they can take it off. I've or, never really usually do. They usually don't know, and I, you know. Uh, or why? Or why wouldn't you do that? I don't know. I mean, I guess you probably could. It, it depends if you, you know, if you you got if you trust the location and blah blah blah. You know, you could do that. Uh, most of the time, they're not going to want to fool with it anyways. I know for some simple stuff. Maybe I, I do have one location I give it to because and, 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 and this is the one I'm talking about now where that's at. They, they, he does have a key, and, and it's mainly because uh, he does we do he does parties sometimes and we t charge a flat rate. So he can if I and I happened to be out of town one time and he luckily had it and he could flip he figured out he or he had his wife figure out how to put him on free play. So then we put him on free play for an evening for a party, you know, and it's actually. Uh, a That's place like a and it's actually a, with 20 pinballs. No, this place only has it ha, I have five in there, and it's a and, and it's actually they do concerts. There's like it used to be actually used to be Goodyear for the it used to be Goodyear headquarters, and now it's like an apartment and they got like a Goodyear theater where they do concerts and stuff. And it's a brewery in there, oh, so okay. it's kind of like a used to be their main headquarters, and now it's that you know because they moved their headquarters across the street. This used to be one of their old headquarters, so. Uh, but they have a, he ha, he has a key, so I do do. I mean, I have some places it just depends, I guess. Yeah, your level of trust with them. I mean, like the one place at the Bullet Alley, you you know, you wouldn't be sure who was working, so you know, and who was going to be able to do it. So, uh, I would I wouldn't give them I wouldn't give them a key, you know. But do you ever have a game that? Maybe it didn't perform that well, and you're like, I just want to get out of it and dump it. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm not going to say. There's one company I just got rid of a bunch of stuff, a few of them, up because I started having some issues with them. I'm not saying they're bad games. They might be great for home, but just for sometimes for operating some of the stuff. If you start, I mean, if I start having some problems with it all the time, it's like, and then and then there's also a, a couple of them that I won't buy. I would, I'd like the game, and I have one at home. And it's the one company from the Netherlands. But I would never put that game on location because you'll be going up there every night. 
or I mean, he just will be. And I even told my one buddy, and he has a couple games, he has a brewery, and he has games. I said, Matt, I said, don't put this game on location. I said, just don't do it. He put it I out there. People, when people see that game, because I've seen it on location, and people are attracted to it, it's, yes, there's ball hang up to other issues that. There's just too much, it's just, there's just too much issues for it to be on location. You're, you're it's going to drive you crazy. Guys. But for home, it's great. For, in your house, it's fantastic. But they just don't have that. They're not there yet with that, uh, the, the, like the basic software and the basic stuff to, 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 you know, to have a game out on location where it's going to be on 10 hours a day, where you know, at home you're going to turn it on today and maybe turn it on Saturday when a couple buddies are over. And you're, going to do, you're not going to have that problem with that game then. But, but if it's out on location constantly, you're just going to, it's going to be an issue. And, and he found out that. And then luckily, I think he, did, I think he ended up taking it home. Because it, but it, but it's a great game for home. I mean, there's a lot of them that are designed. It, it, there's nothing wrong with that for at home. I mean, but you know, right now for for operating, definitely Stern has the thing for for operating. I mean, and the old Bally Williams stuff and the Chicago gaming stuff is is pretty rock solid too. Yeah. That stuff's pretty. The rebuilds are rock solid. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about. I have three of them at one place, and they're all the LEs, and they're have no problem whatsoever with them. I mean, that's the, that's the other ones that's been good. I mean, and, and as, as, an, as an operator getting them out, you you want that. You have to, I mean, that's, you have to be able to, you don't want to be running there every day day of the week. I mean, because that just costs you money going back and forth, especially with, you know, gas and everything. Now you can't, you're, I mean, in the prices of games, you, you, you have, you know, you have to, you know. The Chicago Gaming Company, is that independent of Stern or? or yeah, that's a whole other company. And they're doing like, they did like, they they're doing a remake. The Attack from Mars. And they did Monster like Bash, that. Attack from Mars, Medieval, Cactus. and Cactus Canyon. Oh, that's okay. their ones. And the Cactus is, they've been coming out. They're starting to get, they're starting to. Uh, are they going from the original like uh, patents or what are they doing? He, uh, the one guy bought that. He had, uh, he has the rights to remake the games. Okay. He bought that off of Gene Cunningham. Gene Cunningham had the stuff for the had the patents for the parts. Pace I can tell you all this more than I can too, that he had the patents for the parts. And I think then the one guy ended up having to having it the guy from Australia had it he had the rights to make the games. And somehow uh, the guy from uh, the guy from Planetary ended up with got both of them. But then he still had to get, he still has to kind of get the okay, I think, from Bally Williams. I mean, but if it's a cop, I, but I don't think they, they don't care. You know, they just let, he, he, he does it, you know, but he can make whatever the game. Now, like, especially them kind of games, but if it, if it comes to like an Adams Family, of course, he's going to have to get, he's going to have to get the Adams Family Foundation approval, too. You know, he can't just make that game foundation again. Foundation from uh, Adam, there's an Adams Family Foundation. That's why. That's for the uh, the cartoon and the rights for the cartoon, not the pinball. It's it would be for the likenesses of the people. Okay. And and that's why it's been hard for lately because because people have been saying about making play fields and you, you can't really. I guess they've been kind of difficult to deal with. I don't know. Some of you know it's just going to be one of the things. You know some all the any of these the, any of these movie pin things. The movie or you're talking about. The, the Amazon movie that they originally made the pinball for? Yes, I'm talking about the movie. The likenesses of the people in the, in the movie. Okay. The likenesses, like just to reproduce that, if they want to reproduce anything from that game, they would have to, go, have to go out and get the rights to do that again. From, they could, he may have the rights to produce the pinball, Adam's Family, but he still has to get secondary rights from Adam's Family, from that, to let, for them to say, okay, because wow. they want some money. It's the same thing of all these, any of these, any of these movie titles, like ACDC, they can't just all of a sudden say, hey, I'm going to run another 500 ACDCs. Can't do it until they go talk to, even though they, the pinballs, okay, they, they could make an, I suppose they could probably make an ACDC with no artwork and whatever, no music. You could do that, but that's what I'm saying. You'd have to, you have to go get their rights again. Yeah. That's why, you, that's why when they quit, they sometimes well, they, they don't, they do, don't ever go back. They unless, do like you know, the comic. Or something like that. Because yeah. artists, you still have to get the license. There's, there's artists they could. You still have to go back and get their. their they could sketch something and call it their sketch, and so there's kind of a way around. But if you're still going to use their music, 
Yeah, or yeah, music, that's, that's still, you're yeah. going to have to. Yeah, I mean, that's that's sure. what I said. Any of like like that's why you see them. Okay, Attack from Mars. There's no secondary medieval. No secondary. Yeah. There's no. They're, they're not movie games. Yeah. You know, or, or or band games or whatever. You know. So you're gonna uh, you're not gonna have that. I mean, I'm just trying to think of some of the other like Twilight Zone. They decide they're gonna make that. Yeah. There's gonna be someone else that they're gonna have to talk to. You know, he you know he may want to make it. You know, Circus Voltaire, he can make that, you know, stuff like that. He can make yeah. that easy. Big Bang Bar, which he does have the rights to that, too. He can make that. I mean, some of them games like that that are non, you know, non-licensed, other secondary licensed games, you know, that's what they're... But I think their next game that for Chicago Gaming we're talking about, I think theirs is going to be, a, it's a, it's a, their own title. I think they're coming out with one oh, of their own. Oh, really? Wow. They're coming out with their own title. I don't know what it is. I've heard rumors, but uh, there's, I think there's Cactus and then... They're having their, their their own their first own game, so which may be pretty you know which would be pretty neat to see you know and everybody knows that James Bond's coming out, which is good. Yeah, it's not here. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's made yet. It can't be made. It would have could have been maybe a month, or three, two weeks later we could we would probably had one for sure, or at least maybe you know a couple of weeks later we would have had one. But we try to get them as fast as you know if we can. For especially for the shows, if, it's, if the timing works out, you know, it's just all about timing usually, you know. Uh, but I mean, if, I mean, if, you, if that's ever something you ever wanted to do to get in operating games, it's it, it's a, it's definitely it's not easy. There's nothing easy about it, you know. I mean, you got to get, you know, then you get a, you, you got to get a way to move them there. A truck, you know. I have a do I went from little. Yeah, I do. Yep, I have I have them, I have them insured. How much does that cost? Is it like per game or? Well, I have my truck insured when I'm driving there, so that's another thing. There, it's insured, and and uh, it usually you insure per the lo by. Well, there's a couple ways you can do it by location, or you can do it by just a bulk, like you know. There's different. different it just depends how many games and whatever. And that's the other thing when we were talking about earlier, some places. Like we were talking about like in Pennsylvania, I know they they they, they license make you have a license per game. That was one of the reasons why Papa years ago could never have. They'd only do the two tournaments because if he was open longer for like an arcade there, he had to pay. It, it was something like eight hundred dollars per game in there for a license per year. Wow. So what, I mean, is that to the state? I think it was actually to the either some of maybe to that to the county and to the. state. To the state, I think somehow, because wow. I think it was more to the, the, the location where that. Because I think there's other places in Pennsylvania they don't have to do that. I'm almost positive, like that Helicon Brewery. And that, I'm sure they they don't have to do that. I think they're in another. But what that county, county, the county government, like the county was saying, it, okay, it's here. I, I mean, I know Pennsylvania is one of them. I heard it's real bad for, like the license per game for that. I mean, especially for like a pinball. If, if it's if they're charging you eight hundred dollars a year, and you had that many games like they had, you know, three hundred games, you ain't gonna do that. You're like, wow. you're like yeah. crazy. No way. Can't do it. Can't make any money. You know, you can't do it. You know, that's it's a lot. You know, it's just too much. Usually, a lot of the places, I think, it's like a couple hundred dollars a game. You know, like most places now don't charge eight. Like in Ohio, there's or any, any place or insurance. insurance. Uh, for uh, for lights, basically what you're given to the city or the county. The only thing right now that this state just did like four years ago, which you have to have, if you have any crane machines out, like a crane or anything that doesn't give you a prize every time, you have to have like a Class B license. It, it's it's not that much. It's like per. I think I pay like. I think it's like uh, three hundred dollars. Two, every two years, and it was it was mainly started because of all these mom and pop gambling places. They were trying to kind of get rid of them, you know the the things. Yeah. So they kind of the cranes kind of got looped into that because you don't win every time when you're doing a claw machine. Yeah. Or like a lighthouse, or like these different games. But if you win every time, it doesn't matter. Or if it's like a just a regular video game or a pinball, they don't that 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 doesn't go into that. They're like they're in the other class. But if it's a but, but like the cranes and stuff were like a class B because you're not getting a prize every time. So that changed. So I have to, every three years, you have to tell them the locations and what games or what non 
or non-prize games like that are here, or, or you know, they're because they consider them somewhat of a gambling device, you know. Yeah. Well, how how much per year on average per pinball do you have to have insurance covered? Oh, I don't know because it's kind of bulked into mine. I don't know how much I. I I don't know. It's just even just for like my trucks, like a but it's less basically than like, like a thousand dollars. Well, program. my trucks like a thousand a year. Yeah, yeah, it's less than that. Yeah, it's a lot less than that. You, it's, it's you're insuring it for what, like electrical shock or something like that, or somebody gets injured on the machine. Yeah, or... and then you you got to insure it for like you know for theft or damage and stuff too. You know. You've had some like water leakage. What? Did you have water leakage at one point? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You 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 never know. Yeah, you. Know, you can have I mean, there's, there's, I mean, they have it. It's divided between like liability and the damage to the unit, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like liability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think what else. I have a question. Yeah. So, say you're interested in operating, um, and you live in a small town that doesn't have any pinball machines uh, anywhere, but you have a few pins that can go into a local uh -huh. bowling alley or whatever. Like, how do you approach them, and what? Can you offer them as far as like how you would split um, the money that the pinball machine made? Like, is there any tactics or advice you would go into that would make the deal better for you as the operator to an establishment? You know. So I, I guess the first thing I would you know, like, do they have first? Do they have like jukeboxes and that kind of stuff in there? The cranes. Okay. Do, I mean, if you, I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm just saying. Okay, like, well, first thing I would, first thing, first thing I would go in there and I would look and see, okay, such and such company is already in here first or, or not. You got to know that kind of, yeah, you might talk to the owner and say, hey, look, I noticed you don't have any pinballs. Okay, the, the owner could say, hey, look, such and such company, hey, get me, I want a Mandalorian and I want a new James Bond in here. Right. And they go to that company and say, well, we ain't going to do that. We don't mess with pinball. Then, then then, it's your case, and you come in, you can say, hey, I can do this for you, blah, blah, blah. You know, we'll start off. If you really want to get foot in the door at the beginning, you start off with, hey, you know, I could do it for like 60, 40, you know, and, and then I'll get the games and put them in there. Then as you get to a better relationship with them, you know, and then try to, you know, say, hey, you know, it's getting a little more expensive, you know, or whatever, you know, once you, you know, you got to get your foot in the door, then, you know, you might go from two to a bigger place to work. Like the one I started off with three games and now there's 23 there, you know, it's the same thing, you know, and, it, and, and like I said, it, you know, it, it's still not like it used to be before COVID. I mean, none of the places are, I'm just telling you. And, and, and it's, there's two things to that part of it, I think. There's more pinballs out too now. It isn't like before, you know, it isn't like, I mean, I was, like Donnie too at Kid Force, and then I had Stone Edge. We were like at the beginning one of the main place, the two main places around ten years ago. Around the place where if you wanted to go play pinball, you went to one of them two places. And now there's you know there's now there's the breweries and like I said, my, and then there's places down in Keene. There's just there's more places. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, if you look at it one way as an operator, like ah, some people, oh, they're getting they're they're going away. No, it's getting to me. I look at it like it's getting more people involved. Okay, so you got your Mandalorian and this here, but but you don't have an Elvira, but there's one here. Right. Okay, so then people, oh, I got to go over here to play Elvira now. So you know, you try to do that a little bit, you know, and you know, and then if you're close to another person that operates games, which you you know, which which you know, Donnie, me and Donnie, and I have given him a couple spots even before, and it's like, hey, but I say, what what games you have over there? And he'll say such and such, and I'll say, hey, okay, I'll put this over here across the street. Or whatever, if I got stuff We're here over here, so that way you're not working, you're not working against each other. You're still you're working with each other to get the people to go back and forth. I mean, it's not it's not always about you know, hey, I got to beat this guy. No, it's about if you work together like that and, and have something different, they'll go play them, and you'll get, and you'll guy you'll be getting more people involved in it. I, that's the way I look at. It. I think more more is better in the long run, you know. So. Do you work with the leagues a lot, or do you have to do you start the leagues? Or how I, I have the one lady at my place, Jessie, she, she's supposed to be up She runs a lot, a lot of my leagues up there, and I, I did some when she was not for COVID, but I yeah, I try to be involved in them as much as I can, especially in the wintertime. Yeah. I try to get in, try to get back involved. It's, it's just, we do casual leagues. We, used to, we have did IFPA and stuff before a lot. We do that a lot. We do that on and off. I mean, some people, you know, you get some people that's a little afraid of that. 
You know, you, they, they just want to come in and play. They don't, you know. And some, then you have the real players that want all IFPA. It, so it's, it's kind of. I like you know, to start launch parties. Those are always fun. We used to, yeah. yeah we do the launch parties at the one. And we, I mean, it's, it's one of the things we used to do. You know, we, we try to do some IFPA, maybe tournaments on a weekend, one day a month or something, and then try to do, we do the casual stuff. Yeah, there were lots, you do, lots of tournaments pre-COVID, and then COVID hit, and then it's still kind of like uh, It's kind of since, the, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a little bit of a, since COVID, to get the IFPA stuff kind of rolling again, that's been a little bit, not as much, it seems like. That was kind of rolling really good, and then it's kind of like, it, it, I just hasn't got back to like where it was at all. I mean, I don't think, I think it's probably... Now it's starting to pick up pace, maybe a little bit, but it wasn't. It's, a, it's like all these, it's the pit, your pinball, it's like a rankings, and they rank you for your state championships each year. Each year, you, you, get, you build your pinball rankings by going and playing in these IFPA tournaments, in these different tournaments, local tournaments, big tournaments, whatever. And then at the end of the year, what is it now? Is it the top 25? I don't, I don't yeah. is it top 25 at the end of the year? Get invited to, in each state, Get invited to the national. Get invited to go play, and and it's somewhere in Ohio, and then they'll compete to go to the national, and go play for you know. But they'll be, compete for the state championship first. I've hosted one at Stonehenge at the one Bolton Alley where Donnie's hosted one at Kid Force for the championships. We've we've each hosted one where they've come and played for in, at our places for states. Wow, you know so. Yeah, and you see the people that are playing at the tournament over there because yeah, it's a all, certain yeah. pro circuit tournament, so they get lots of points That's, for playing there. It's like a very high stakes, and there's people from all over the world and country. Yeah, this one here, this is a big tournament. That are like the top hundred players. Yeah, this is know, a big in the tournament. Entire world. Really? Wow. You know, so this they is, take, yeah. yeah, it's very pretty serious, and this is one of the big tournaments. Yeah, this is because it's a circuit, like she said. The circuit tournaments are, a, yeah, they get a lot of points for that. They will get way, 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 way more points than like your what, average what is, thirty people tournament at uh, at a bowling alley on the week what, or what a league. What does that stand for? That I International yeah. Flipper Pinball Association. Okay. Right. Yeah, and you can get on there. Like it's it's got you. It's got divided nationally yeah. and it also has you can go on by state and look at either or you know tells you where you're at in your state tells you're at where you're at in the world wow now i don't and i remember there used to be like thirty thousand people and i don't know what it's at it's i'm sure it's way over a hundred thousand yeah i mean i think I, I remember it was like 30 or then it was like 70 so i know it's over a hundred thousand people you know and you just keep getting you know and the more tournaments you play in you know you can move up your rankings and that's and that's another thing that's good for operating games. I mean, it's another avenue that you have to to you know to try to make to try to bring in revenue for the games. I mean, you know, and then and and the games are also the new ones aren't as much, I don't think. But you know, your older the older turns you were capable of running the top tournaments inside of them, which was always a good little thing to do too. We'd run monthly ones. You program it like. You program it, and you could you could say, okay, it's a dollar a game, but fifty cents of that dollar is going to a prize pool every time you play that. Every time you push for the tops, and so that way, and then that, the machine will separate that by the end of the month. Then your top four would get X amount of money. Wow. So there they are. They which was always we used to do. And Mike would tell you we used to do that. We used to do that quite a bit, and it, it was something that when you could you know you might win thirty, forty, fifty. At the end, you could, you know, that's how much people was in there playing for the, you know, we'd always do like the top four. I think it, I think it goes up to top four or five on it, it would do. I don't think the new games do that, though, anymore. But that was like, you know, your, I'm trying to think what your games like Tron and all them, they all have that capability. As long as you had that little tops button in it, you pushed a button, and it's, it, wow. it, it's like a the button. Future inside connection. What? In the future, maybe start an inside connection. Probably be able to maybe to do that with the connection somehow. I mean, it was a, another it was another way to run little side tournaments, especially you could run, you could run a one day you could have a big tournament yeah. and then that one day run three side tournaments right into one game right there and ended it ended that day. You could have it where it's five dollars a play and three of it's whatever you could do whatever you know do it, whatever you wanted to make the pool. You know, which was kind of nice. You didn't have to be there. You just it'll divide it. You know, you, and and you you put the you put the you program the date in it, and then you program the exact hour it quit or minute. Hey, it's over at 8:05. Done. It shuts off. Tournament's done. 
you know, and, and then then you or, or you could have a playoff at the end, say whatever. You know, it was. I mean, there's there's a lot of other things you can do when you're you know other things that you, you can do to make to try to you know to help supply. Like I said, I I call it this. It helps me with my habit of collecting games. <laughs> That's all really it does for me. You know, but. I mean, that's pretty, I mean, well, that, like, uh, but I do like, I mean, with the way all the, the, you know, the new technology is definitely going to help in the long run, I think, you know, like hopefully, like you said, with these card readers, maybe that's something that's coming here pretty soon, you know, it's not, hey, I mean, the jukebox has a thing where you can swipe your card, you know, maybe the games eventually one day will have that, you know, it's built right in, you know, swipe it. And, Especially with this internet connected, it's easy. You know, you think you could, you think it could be done fairly easy. You know, I don't. But I, one thing I've had trouble. I guess we were talking a little bit before about when we started to get about the internet connect was uh, my one big location doesn't have. The machines want you to put in. You have to put in a password for the internet connect, and then. But that bowling alley has a thing. When you walk in, you're you're on their Wi-Fi. It doesn't require you to have a password. But the machine doesn't. No, won't do that. The, the new inter oh. I've talked with Stern about that. It yeah. won't. It wants you to have to put in a password, and said so they don't want to give me the one password because all their all their uh, credit card machines are hooked to it. I don't. I don't know why, so I'm like, okay. So we, we still haven't got all that figured out, so that's why my one bigger location I still don't have on the Internet Connect because oh, of that. The, uh, I think the location that you're working with, they need to just add a second um, private Internet on their, that's right. on their router. That's what I was trying because to tell them. Because wants a password, I think, because they're very, like, privacy protected. Yeah. They don't want, like, our information leaked and stuff. Yeah, I, I I get that. That's why I was trying. He's supposed to be getting but they getting just a minute. Call their internet provider and they say, just "Give turn me another one." Five seconds. This usually doesn't charge anything. It's else. been like pulling teeth to get him to do it. I don't know. I'm, I, I guess well, I, calling Comcast is usually never fun. I, I don't I don't know who they're with. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna find out when I I take I took a couple of games out of there to bring here. So I'll, when I go back there, I'll find out because because I I've actually bought uh, the aprons and stuff for some of the games up there, and, and I mean they're just sitting on the shelf at home. And I you know to put them on because. Some of them the, before they did this, you, you know, you can buy the thing and make them internet connect. But your other locations, they don't have wireless there. Some of the other ones I have hooked up already. Oh, you do? Yeah, at the eighty-three, at the one brewery I do, the Mando, I have a couple of them there, and the one other, yeah, the other ones I do. If I have the, you know, but that's my main one where I have most of my a lot of the stuff though. So. Do you plan on putting up leaderboards? So the location leaderboards, kind of like what you. I've see seen over what what's wrong. Yeah, so what. They have it, so it's a really easy thing to do at any bar locations. And it kind of you just hook off. You, it just runs off one of their off one of their yeah TVs. any TV screen that has like Roku or Google Chrome, uh, Chromecast or something, and then you just tap a few buttons with your app um, as an operator, and then you can just have the leaderboards on there too, which has been it's always awesome seeing the high scoreboard. I see that, and that, and that just then that would just be for each location for for the that would they could look so at that for just their location. Right now. Yeah, I was going to look. I, I seen he was doing that over there. All you have to do is scan in, though, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure that would definitely. I mean, I have. There's definitely the capability to do it at the one place if I. I'd have to. I mean, there's TVs even there that they don't use anymore. Oh, but I don't even know if they're. I don't know if they're. How new they are. But I mean, but what, the TV don't cost that much anymore. Yeah. Anyways. You can get like the little $15 like knockoff um, fire stick at Walmart oh. and then stick it into the HDMI. On that TV, yeah, they'll still do the same thing. It pulls up a browser. Yeah, you should be good. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely something. That, that's just recent, right? Yeah, that's very recent. Did yeah, they come in this up? past month. Okay. So that's new stuff. I mean, all that stuff definitely would help if you're putting games out for sure. People like to see their, just, uh, that's the whole, the pre well, it's the whole premise of, the whole thing of the, of the IFPA kind of. Yeah. It's the same yeah, thing. Exactly. It's basically the same thing, but this would be like your little IFPA, your, at your location. Yeah, hometown street cred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go in and beat you tonight. There, I'll I'll put my name in front of yours. That's I mean that's where that's the competition you would get. You know, I'm gonna go in here. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll get a high score. But any other questions or anything else? Well, I thank thanks for coming in here. And 
like I said, I hope I've been a little more, a little informative. Like I said, I just <laughs> started to learn a lot of things for the but, next. But, but yep, thanks. Yep, hey, all right. Thank you.